This is James Elder for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. I'm in Leicester today at the Falcon Inn. With me, I've got none other than the body, uh, the body snatcher, Mr. Dillian White. How are you? <laughs> you call him the corn chucker then. Hey, how you doing, brother? I'm good. What are you saying? I'm very well. I'm very well. Firstly, it um, feels like I'm in Emmerdale Farm coming to visit you up here. Tell me a little bit about, about how you're in the surroundings. Surroundings is good, man. You know, like I would say, I'm with my family away from home. You know, my white family, as I say. You know, it's good. It's good to have a... Like, this is literally my home now, actually. I'm I'm here more than I am actually at home. All this training, staying in shape, you know. These people look after me and take me in as one of their own, so it's blessed, man. News for yourself, potentially, we're hearing you're going to be back in action on February the 3rd. Um, well, that was the case before, sort of, everything and of what's been going on late in the heavyweight division, but is that the plan at the moment for yourself? Well, the plan was to get in on December 17th and save the, the big show at all 2 but Belen didn't want to... Get get shaved, you know. So, yeah, Feb third at the O2, that should be my first headline headline fight. So we'll see. Um, you know, she's be dead in the next couple of days, and we'll see where we at with it and who we looking to fight. Cause it's difficult getting opponents, but it is what it is. What was your initial reaction when you saw that David Hay wouldn't be facing Tony Bellew? I wasn't surprised. David's old now, and his body keeps breaking down. You know, some for some fighters, listen, you can look good physically, but Internally, you just break down, you know, and that's why they said when your time is gone, your time is gone. Some fighters can rewind the clock, some fighters can stay the same for some years, but some fighters burn out early, you know what I mean? Being so ripped and so giant, so athletic all the time can actually be a curse as well as you may think it's a blessing. It could be a curse as well because your body's just burning up. Everything you do, your body's burning up and just burning and burning, so you burn out a lot quicker than normal people, you know? Look at... A lot of them guys that peak early and muscular and strong, they burn out all early. You was quick to, to sort of put your, your name into the hat as potentially stepping in to replace David Hay to fight Tony Bellew. What has been the sort of reaction from Eddie Hearn and Tony Bellew for that, for that um, to, to sort of take place? The Bellin doesn't want it. You know, he's not a real heavyweight and he's not the best cruiserweight in the world, you know. He doesn't, he doesn't, he don't want to fight at all. It's as simple as that. Tony Bellew don't want to fight. Listen, he could have made millions of pounds by fighting me and and save the show, you know. A um, lot of people brought tickets. A lot of people brought tickets and stuff, and he, he, he doesn't want to fight. He doesn't want to fight, you know. Could have saved tickets, hotel, flights. He just disappointed and let all the fans down, man. It, it's, it's a shame. It's a shame, you know. It's a shame and really sad, you know. Look, look when you got the lights of Marco Hock moving up and giving Pevetkin hell, you know. But he just don't want to fight. No top. Heavyweight. He didn't want to fight top cruiserweight. You look at the Super Six tournament that's going on. I think it was a hundred million or fifty million or something like that. You ran away from that guy. Do want to fight Husek or Huck or Bradley? So he ran away from that. So that should tell you you need to unbutton the man. You know, and he only want to fight David Hay. He doesn't want to fight Wilder, Joshua, me. He doesn't fight David. How can he be in a weight division and don't want to fight the top fighters? It doesn't make no sense. Why are you in a weight division? Why? You know, the guy. The guy's a tosser, man. You know, first degree. We saw Deontay Wilder take out Bermain Stavern in the rematch in quite emphatic style, brutal finish. Straight after the fight, he was asked about yourself. Would, would he be willing to take yourself? He, he then referred to yourself as a peasant. What was your reaction to that comment from Deontay Wilder? These guys are all taught. They say I'm rubbish. They say I'm a peasant. They say this and that, but they don't want to fight. If I'm a peasant, this this is you know Deontay Wilder taught rubbish. I'm a peasant. Is making one million dollar for fight as a WBC world champion. The last American world heavyweight world champion, Shannon Briggs, and I, the peasant, can pay him four or five times the amount of money he's making to fight in his backyard at home as a world champion. I'm a, I'm a peasant. I can pay him four or five times the amount of money. So that should say, who's the peasant? We're guaranteeing him before I sell a ticket. We're guaranteeing him four million dollars before one ticket is sold. He can't even guarantee me a hundred thousand to come to America and fight him. So if he, he was a call himself, if he, anyone's a peasant, it's him. You know what he did? He went on the internet, looked at some fancy word, and he doesn't know the meaning of the word, and he just decided to use it because I'm British, you know. That's all. He just doesn't want to fight. I don't know why. He says I'm an easy fight. He can beat me with one hand tied behind his back. If I said to you, fight this baby over here. I'll give you four million dollars. You're gonna find you are gonna take it, you know? You're gonna take it. But he's he's a disgrace. He's a disgrace too. And the thing is he's got one of the most prestige belt. Look how much great champions held that belt. And he's not defending it like all they are. 
He ever, he didn't force a manager for two and a half years, and then he fought Ben and Severn at one fight in two and a half years. One fight, Derek Rossi, and Derek Rossi drops Severn in the first round. You know, so that should tell you all you wanted to know. Severn came into the fight, no head movement. He threw three punches and missed every single one of them. You know, he stood there, didn't do nothing. The answer well, I jabbed him twice, stayed in the same spot, stepped down the middle, nailed him. Severn was just like a, a punch bag without legs. <clears throat> they stood there. Only thing, only thing he was good for was getting back up after the first knockdown. You know, Deontay Wilder jumped to the side like that and made a big, massive movement. And Stever this Severn went like that. Severn, I think Severn, somewhere between leaving his house and the changing room, he, he, he got lost somewhere. You know, I think he got lost somewhere in between that. What? What have you made of the situation between Anthony Joshua and Eddie Chambers? The Instagram exchange, it's, it's hit the headlines of late recently. What were your thoughts on that whole situation? I told you all, you know, Joshua, he acts a certain way, but he's, he, you know, like I said, I call him Femi X, you know, Mr. Femi X, you know, but listen, they say it's not him, his phone's been hacked or whatever, I don't know. But hey, if I ever say anything stupid or I do anything stupid, it's not me, my phone's been hacked. And Eddie and can Eddie and can testify in that one as well, so I don't know. You know, um, it's not for me to comment on, but I just don't understand why Eddie Chambers are of all people. <laughs> I don't get it. Eddie Chambers is not relevant. He's retired. He fought Thomas Masryk in the past three years, and that's it. Why Eddie Chambers? Maybe Joshua just a bully. Why? Why, why Eddie Chambers? Why not do that to Deontay Wilder or me or? even Parker or someone else that's relevant to you, you know, why do that to Eddie Chambers who's basically a nobody now, you know, why? Is he a bully or is he just showing that he's just a nasty bit of work like I've always said he is, you know, who knows? But maybe, maybe his phone was hacked, who knows? And why would someone hack his phone and send a message to Eddie Chambers? They would have sent a message to Tyson Fury or, or, or Deontay Wilder or, or, or say, oh, I'm leaving Matchroom and go to Box Nation, something that makes sense. Why would you send something so belittling and derogatory to Eddie Chambers? You know, I don't get it. You know, I don't get it. I don't think no race is superior to me personally, you know. Um, I got black people in my family, white people. I even got some Chinese people in my family. I don't, you know, but listen, good luck to the fellow, man, you know. Um, just look at this way. If it was another boxer that said it, if I said it, Tyson Fury said it, you know, the, the anti Wilder said it, it would have been ridiculed and been, you know, but... He's the golden boy, they'll let him off as usual and he'll, he'll move forward, you know. But race, religion, politics and that, you know, no one should ever comment on those things because each to their own. Everyone is specific and everyone have a point of view and everyone believe what they believe. You should never comment on things like that, I think. That's me personally. Everyone's equal rights and equal opportunity, I believe, you know. So good luck to him. When you're in... When... Sorry, say that again. And I said good luck to him, Femi X. When you're in the public eye and spotlight and stuff, uh, is it is it sometimes pressurising? Does that pressure sometimes get to you? Can you speak from your own personal point of view? If you if you be yourself from day one, then it's never a pressure. With me, I'm cool, I'm respectful. But if someone talks rubbish to me, then I'll say you're talking rubbish, and then I'll just go off. You know what I mean? You know, and that's all you gotta do. Just be yourself, man. I know sometimes it's a lot of pressure. You gotta be a certain way, but if you're yourself and you're true and honest to yourself then no one can't say oh you've changed just be who you are you know don't pretend you're something else or act like you're something else obviously sometimes you take care of it in a bit because obviously there's kids watching what you're doing and whatever but just be yourself don't try to you see the things when you keep it up an act you will drop it at some point but when something is natural and you're being yourself it's it, it, it's your natural way your natural behavior you know your natural instincts but when when it's an act it's only a matter of time. And as you can see, he's had multiple blips in his career when his team's not around him or whatever. I went Eddie and let him out of the cellar, you know. So, but good luck to him, you know. He's doing great things at the minute. He's doing good things for boxing and um, hopefully he continues to do so. We've seen on Twitter there's been negotiations between Eddie Hearn, Ricky Hatton, Lucas Brown and yourself regarding a potential clash. Can you tell us what, what's been going on with that whole situation? The tattoo penis is deluded. Ricky Hearn, great fighter, good warrior. I mean, that, that's a Ricky Hearn, Ricky Hatton. You know, Ricky Hatton is a good fighter, warrior, fought anyone. But unfortunately, he's working and managing fighters nowadays that doesn't have the same, I should have said, mindset of view as him. 
You know, Luke's brother ain't got an option. Where's he going to go? You know, what's he going to do? What's he now, 68 or 40 or something? You know, he just, listen, it's a fight that the fans want to see. It's a good fight. I just want to be involved in good fights. That's all I want to do. I don't want to take some easy road and get to the, the I can wait. You know, I, I could have wait. You know, I can wait and just keep fighting and keep building my record. I will get my shot eventually. But I want to give the fans good fights. You know, I want to, that's all I want to do. I just want to fight some good fights, win some titles, you know, and inspire some people, make some money. That's it. You know, I don't want to, you know, like now, I just I could just fight anyone and say, oh, well, none of the champions want to fight me, so I'll fight another journeyman in America and move forward. I don't want to do that. I want to have good fights. And I think if none of the champions want to fight me, Lucas Brown is, 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 is a good fight, I believe. But we'll see. Eddie's working on it, you know, and saying, oh, if Joseph Parker, I'm like, why would Parker fight Lucas Brown when he wants to fight Joshua? He's already dropped his stock with that Yuri Fury fight on, 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 on YouTube, you know? Like, what's he gonna, where's he gonna fight? Where's he gonna fight Lucas Brown on YouTube again? And do what, 10,000 buys? Come on, dude, stop being stupid, man. Did you happen to watch the press conference from Australia yesterday with Duco Events and Joseph Parker? What, what were your thoughts on that whole event? It was terrible. It, it, it It's the worst. I don't even know what to say, man. You know, these things that he's doing shows his level. And that's why he can't negotiate a high deal or a high percentage because he's got stupid people around him. Duco Event and Kevin Barry, and they're stupid. They're telling him to do stupid things. Why would he, why would he do that? You, you're trying to fight someone, but you're showing a video of him being knocked down by different fighters. No, you should you should be focusing on you and what you can do. Like, what was that supposed to achieve? What game angry? And he, listen, he can fight, he can fight tomorrow's mailman and still make more money than what Parker is ever going to make his whole career. So Parker needs to focus on trying to get his shot and trying to win the fight and stop. That 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 was that charade was was crazy. I think even. Oh, I could have done a bit of um, presentation on my iPhone, you know. It, it was crazy. I, you know what it is? He's got very small-minded, um, bottom-feeding people around him who they just want him to get a couple of million so they can get their 10 and, and 20% of it and just be happy. They don't care if they win, lose, or draw, no. Just trying to sell his belt to the highest bidder so they can have a good Christmas present or whatever, you know. It's a shame. It's a shame, you know. Just destroying his stock over and over again. It's, 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 it's a shame. I feel sorry for him, you know. He's a WBO world champion and got nowhere to go. You know, he's the the, the last heavyweight out of his, his, his country to, w to win a world. Uh, David Tua didn't even win the world title, did he? You know, he's, so he's done more than what David Tua did. So he should be a big draw over there. He should be the Anthony Joshua of, um, of, of New Zealand. He should be billing him big, but he can't, he can't, he can't, you know. He's, um, <sighs> Joseph Parker sucks. There you go, he just sucks. Do you think 35% for Joseph Parker to come over and face Andy Joshua was a lucrative offer and he should have taken that offer or do you think he should hold out for, for a better offer in negotiations? Listen, if a man believe he's real something, I don't blame him for trying to get it, but he sucks. <laughs> he's not gonna get, 35% is a great offer. How much money has he made? His highest paid is one million dollar. This, this, these guys are deluded, you know what I mean? But, but listen, I, I, if I was in this position, I'd want to get more money. So I understand where he's coming from. But 35%, if it's a massive pot, 35% is a lot of money. We're not talking 35% of 10 grand. We're probably talking 35% of, of, of 20 million or 30 million. You know, it's a lot of money. You know, he can go back to New Zealand and eat. Um, what did they eat there? There's a, there's a special food that they eat. He can go to New Zealand and eat fish and, and drive rough for the rest of his life and live happy. You know? It's, it's, it's a lot of money. Guys need to be realistic. I don't hate the fact now that guys is so caught up in this undefeated thing, in this undefeated thing and TV and all that nowadays. That's why fights ain't being made. It's a shame, you know? Guys is trying to, like, everyone should just fight. Everyone should just fight, man. Everyone should just fight. Everyone should fight. Get on. Give the f listen. There'd be more if everyone fought. There would be ten times the amount of money there now. That then what's there now? Uh, everyone just needs to fight. If everyone's fighting, there'd be more money in the pot. There'd be bigger fights. There'd be boxing will become huge again. You know. 
What was your thoughts on Amir Khan deciding to go into the jungle in I'm a Celebrity? Um, firstly, what was your initial reaction when you heard the news he'll be entering? Um, I don't know, man. Amir Khan's a great fighter, good champion, you know. But the last few years, he's been a bit lost. You know, sometimes having too much time as you, in your hand as a professional athlete is no good, you know. I don't know what problems he's got or what's going on in his head. You don't know. Because no one spoke to him and find out what's going on. That's the thing you, you guys should do. Interview him when he comes up and try and find out what's going on in his mind, uh, you know, and, and see. Because, you know, a lot of guys criticise fighters and say things about them, but they don't know what's going on in their mind or in their head or what problems he's having. Could be a number of things. So good luck to him. If it takes a bit of stress and pressure for him to go and relax a bit and do something different, make a bit of money, He's probably going to lose a bit of weight as well because at the minute it looks like he's about 180 pounds. So he lose a bit of weight as well. So you never know, man. Um, I don't. I, I never knock a man for making a living, man. Uh, you know, listen, he probably got 500 grand or whatever he get. I wouldn't say no to an extra 500 grand. I'll take that guy in there and get 40 out the first week and run off into the night. <laughs> Thoughts on Tyson Fury training, potentially making a comeback. He, he's making all the right noises. We've seen videos via his Instagram post um, suggesting that he's back in the gym. What What are you thinking about a, a, ret a return for Tyson Fury? A return for Tyson Fury is going to be difficult, you know. It's going to be very difficult, but it's good. You know, it's good that he's back because we need guys like him because he's so colourful and so charismatic. And it's another potential fight for me also. So, you know, it, it's, it's really good that he's back. And he brings life to the every division. He's like me. He speaks his mind. He says whatever he wants to say. So, but it's a it's a long hard road back. You know, even when he was in the prime and he was in shape, it was difficult for him to keep his weight down. It was difficult for him to get in shape. He's six foot nine, or whatever. You know, he's a big guy. So now you're almost close to thirty stones or whatever he is. It's gonna be hard. And then you haven't fought for two and a half years. Listen, I had two and a half years out of the ring, and I'm still paying for it now. So. He will understand. He will understand what it takes. You know, if he can come back and get back to the highest level, then fair play to him and all credit due to him because it's a difficult thing. I've been there before. I've been off for two years and come back and um, fight my way back to the top level. But I'm a I'm a resilient, stubborn bastard. So, you know, it takes a lot. It takes a lot. But one thing I didn't do, I didn't blow up to 20 stones. I I, I carried on keeping my weight down. It was very difficult to stay motivated and keep training, but. I, I I tried, but we'll see. You know, good luck team, and hopefully, he can do what he need he needs to do. You know, I think obviously we need Peter Fury in his corner to to motivate him and to get the work and to get his weight down and to keep him on track. So hopefully, you know, he will come back with, with Peter, and then so we'll see. And you know, I've been in camp with him before, and Peter gets that extra work out of him and that extra push out of him. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Do you believe Peter Fury to be key? If Tyson Fury is to make a successful return into boxing, do you think it's it's critical that he has Peter Fury in his corner? I think it is from a mental point of view. From men, it's more of a mental point of view than anything because Tyson can fight and he will fight, but it's a mental thing. It's about the discipline. It's about Peter Fury taking him away to Belgium for for four months and getting him in shape, letting him eat flipping just bland rice and chicken breast and and, and vegetable, you know, and forcing him to do it, going to the gym which is three, four miles away, working out and just jogging back, uh, walking back. Peter runs with him and stuff like that. You know, I trained with Peter before. So he's a very good taskmaster and he motivates you. And, you know, I mean, he's quite knowledgeable. He's quite a knowledgeable guy with the boxing. He, he knows his nutrition and stuff and he knows how to get that little heavy. So I think I think it will be key. You know, Tyson Fury, you'll find out sooner or later that, you know, some guys... You don't need world beater trainers or anything like that. It's just motivation. Just like David Hay, when he left Adam Booth, he went downhill in my my point of view. When George Groves left, George went downhill, you know. So some fighters just need some guys to motivate them and to train them, you know. And 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 that's more important than, you know, it's, that's very important, you know. Some people just get in your head. They know to get in your head and know what to say and know what to do and know how to get you in a certain state, you know what I mean? So, and I think Peter Fury gave him that edge, you know? That's what I think. That's my honest opinion. I don't know, you know, I don't know what happened behind the scenes or whatever, but, but that's what I could see from being in camp with them and being around them, you know?
Potentially David Price could be his comeback fight. Potentially we've seen Shannon Briggs is in the running to get the fight, which could be very entertaining. What are your thoughts on I that? Don't think, I don't think he wants any of those fights as comeback fight. Maybe a second, maybe the second one. I don't think he wants any of those fights. Listen, we are fighters. We all say this and we all say that, but we are realistic as we are realistic as well. You're gonna come back over two years later and fight Shannon Briggs, who is a massive puncher. who's have the most first round knockouts in the whole heavyweight boxing history. And he will come out swinging, he's got nothing to lose. You're going to fight David Price, who's having a warm-up fight now, in the next couple of weeks or whatever, and very heavy-handed. Price maybe because a lot of people think Price's heart is weak. I don't think that. A lot of people think his chin's dodgy. I don't think his chin's dodgy. I just think he doesn't under the nerve well. That's what I think. Because even the fights he gets stopped, they just part. Tony Thompson never stopped him on the floor. Christian Hammer never stopped him on the floor. Only person who stopped on the floor was Eric Antapa, and that was a good swing, swinging left hook that put 90% of people out. So, you know, but I think he, be realistic and, listen, Tyson talks a lot of shite, but he's not stupid. He's definitely not stupid. He's more intelligent than what he makes out, you know what I mean? You know, so he's not stupid. He would talk and say this and say that. Otherwise, he'd come back and fight AJ straight away because that's where the money's at, you know, but he's not stupid. He knows he needs two, three warm-up fights first. You know, he can come back and fight Bellew and beat Bellew tonight, though, even at 21 stones. Seriously? Yeah. Bellew is not heavyweight. Any big guy, Bellew haven't got the power to hold big guys off. You know, he ain't got the power to hold. Or is he going to keep the likes of a Tyson Fury? He criticized my performance against Robert Elanius. I said Elanius would knock Bellew out in two rounds. Because Bellew is not a heavyweight. He's not. David Hayes is not a heavyweight. David A, the bigger David is, the worse he performs. You know, that's the thing, you know, when David, he fought Vladimir at 15 stone something, you know, Valley of 15 stone something, um, Montebar at 15 stone something, um, General Ruiz, and then he came in against Bellew 16 stone, and it showed. He showed, he showed big time, you know, he showed. Thoughts on Big Baby Miller. He got a good win over Marius Wack. I think it was a ninth round TKO uh, out in New York or Long Island. Very vocal about yourself. Said he's, well, we, as we've seen on IFL TV, he's uh, pretty much up to the task to come and face yourself. He's up for the fight. What, what was your reaction to uh, the, the talk from Big Baby Miller? I don't see no contract. All I see is talks. I don't see, listen, all i got to say is I don't see no contract. All I see He's stuck. He needs to change his diaper because he's full of shit. That's what he needs to do. He needs to change his, his diaper because he's full of shit. All I hear is talk, talk, talk. I don't see no contract. You know where, Matt. Send a contract to Matchroom. You're with Matchroom. You know, I'll fight any one of these guys. I've never been scared to fight anyone, as you know. You've seen it my whole career. I don't care, you know. I don't care about all, all these guys. They just talk crap, man. All these guys do is talk and talk and talk. When it comes on to fighting, they don't want to fight. Once again, Tony Bellew. Oh, Dylan White's crap. Dylan White get knocked out for the British title. He forget he got sparked out too. You know, by a guy who was calling a Smurf. A Smurf knocked him out and said, who's, who, who's that Smurf now? Adana Stevenson. Yeah, that's what he said. He said, hey, hey, who, who's that Smurf now? I knocked your ass out, you know? <laughs> so, so, you know, but these guys just, I'm sick and tired of, these guys talking and, and don't want to fight, man. Like I said, I'll fight anyone. If it makes financial sense, ranking sense, right, it moves me up, let's get it on. I'm ready to fight anyone inside the top 10. Anyone, anyone, anyone. You know, I've never, you know. These guys just, just talk and talk and talk and say they want to do this, they want to do that. He said, oh, I'm not, you know, Wack was terrible in that fight. I couldn't believe that's the same matter as Wack. Wack was terrible. Wack, Wack was, Wack was, <laughs> he actually looked like a granddad. He actually did. You see the way he actually looked. Oh, his legs were slim. He looked out of shape. He was pushing his punches. He look, he just looked like he didn't want him to be there, really. You know. And he was tagging the hell out of Miller. Miller's body is open the whole time. Uppercut to the head. Body shots is there the whole time. He's a big guy. He he, he plods forward and tried to break it down with his weight. He's got high punch, high put, but he also open himself up as well, you know? So, but, you know, maybe if he changes his diaper and, you know, put some, some talking powder on and come and see me, then we we can get it on. But, you know, we'll see, man. I, I'm chasing the royal title, but 
it's the title's not there. I'll fight any one of these cats. I've already said it. That's it. You know. Give me your three or four potential names that we could see you in with for February 3rd. Realistically, who are you and Eddie discussing at the moment? Who can be in the frame for that date? We tried Joseph Parker, Wilder, Lucas Brown, maybe even a Johan Dorpa, or... I don't know, there's not a lot, you know, there's not a lot of fighters there really, is it? Because people want to see me fight the top guys, but the top guys don't want to fight me, so what can I do? You know, I can't go back to fighting the likes of um, Nassimiento or, or um, that fella in, in America. What's his name again? That's bad of me to forget his name. I remember everyone's name that I fought. Um, Malcolm Tan. I can't fight all of the, you know, people want to see me in the big fights, but, you know, these guys don't want to take the chances. They all want to cash out against AJ, you know? That's all it is. They want to sell their belts and their titles. Coincidentally, you can watch your fight against Nascimento on IFL TV. I filmed, I filmed the whole thing standing up in, in Small Hall. And uh, thanks to Mickey Elliott for allowing me to do that. That's why I get a big up to IFL. IFL is on their job. They get the job done. All is there. Been supporting my whole career. We've had some great laughs over the years, man. You know, we've had some really great laughs. And I enjoy it. Listen, I enjoy giving back to the fans, man. That's what I like doing. I like fighting good fights. You know, I like f thrilling the fans, you know, I like, that's what, that's what I like doing, man. This is a part of it. And, you know, I'm happy to be on the, on, the, on, the, on the platform and that. And, you know, we do good work together. So, yeah. Hopefully 2018 will be a big year for the body snatcher, a.k.a. Sweet Chuck, a.k.a. Mr. Corn Chucker. I just want to chuck corn. That's all I want to chuck corn at everyone in the top 10. But they, they don't want to receive no corn. You know, they don't want to, these guys, these guys is just... Heavyweight boxing is it, it's it's an unpredictable sport. You know, all the other guys at the lower weight, everyone's fighting everyone. Even Canelo and Golov Canelo and Golovkin finally made it in the ring. So why don't these guys want to fight? You know, why why are these guys running away from good fights? Why are these guys running away from fights that's paying them? Why are they running away from fights that's gonna test them? Why? I don't I don't understand why, you know. Is it is it only me that's willing to fight anyone? Or what's going on? Did you fight Joshua in your 16th fight? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, I, and I, I could I could have pulled out the fight many times. Even the second round, Jonathan Banks had to pull me up. I said, there's 20,000 people here. You think I'm going to let these fans down? I think I'm going to sit on my stool. And Because if you think the fight before me, I think two people quit on their stool because of injury. I could have done the same thing, but that's not me, man. I, I, I come to fight and I'm going to give it a go until... I can't give it a go anymore. And I think that's what these guys is worried about because they know I would bring arms ass to their mum's ass. Old school. On that note, Dillian White, if there's anything you want to add before we vacate, I really appreciate yourself making yourself available for IFL TV yet again. No, I was going to say thanks. Thanks, you guys, for coming to see me and giving me a platform, etc. And follow me on Instagram and Twitter, guys. And um, keep supporting me. Thank you guys very much. I don't. I know I don't smile so much anymore these days, but my my jaw muscles has been tired from years of over smiling. <laughs> no, 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 I'm joking. No, no, I'm joking. No, 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 no. Thanks, thanks, man. That's all I can say. Thanks. Keep supporting me. Keep chasing these chumps until one of them decide to fight me. You know what I mean? I see. Don't worry. I'm watching you guys comment in. Even the haters and the negative ones. Thank you guys. It means a lot. The worst thing for professional athlete is not being talked about. So if it's good or bad, just keep talking, keep subscribing, keep buying the fights, tuning in to watch me win, lose or draw. I don't care. Thank you very much. I appreciate your, your hate and your support. Dylan White, thank you very much. We'll catch you real soon. Cheers, bro. Corn for them. <laughs>